Our next four items work our way through Zechariah chapter 5, verses 1 to 4. So let's listen to those verses. Now the angel who talked with me came back and wakened me as a man who is wakened out of his sleep. And he said to me, What do you see? So I said, I am looking, and there is a lampstand of solid gold with a bowl on top of it. And on the stand, seven lamps with seven pipes to the seven lamps. Two olive trees are by it, one at the right of the bowl and the other at its left. So I answered and spoke to the angel who talked with me, saying, What are these, my lord? So Zechariah has shown this scene. It's a vision. There is a lampstand. It's all of gold. It's got a big bowl on the top, and it has seven branches extending off of it that go up with a lamp on the top of each one. But there's one thing that sort of puzzles Zechariah, and he sees on either side of the lamp, Stand, he sees a tree, an olive tree on either side. They're standing kind of above the branches there. And he pauses kind of to think about that. What does this mean? So Zachariah asks the angel, what, what does this all mean? He, he recognizes the candlestick in the middle, but he doesn't quite get what the trees are about. Well, we'll soon have the angel's explanation, so we're going to wait for that. But we know that what we have here, we have olive trees. And olive trees mean olive oil. And olive oil means... You know, that's the, that's the healthiest kind of oil. Whenever you hear about an anointing in the Bible, uh, it, is, it is basically olive oil. That's the stuff. That's what we use today when we go and anoint someone who's ill. We use just pure olive oil. So olive oil represents, usually we see it representing the Holy Spirit in the Bible. And that's, that's important to keep in mind as we're going to understand this vision. Another thing to keep in mind as we're interpreting Scripture is that many times, something that has significance in in one space that symbol can be modified or added to or reapplied a little bit in another place so right here we're studying in Zechariah. back there the, the the time the time of the exile is going to be the most significant time in forming our best interpretation of what this vision means later in the book of revelation you know quite a long time later after this we're going to see something and we'll adapt that but for here we're going to try to understand what it meant to Zechariah and his his listeners in order to understand the bible right we want to understand what's the meaning to the original author and the original hearer now god's the author so also is the bible writer so there's always kind of a dual authorship through the bible the human part and the divine part but we're looking at what Zechariah was thinking as he wrote this out. We're thinking of what Zechariah's immediate readers and immediate hearers would think as they heard him describe this vision or they read it off the page. So the exile is ended. The people are in Babylon. And you know what? They're pretty comfortable there. They, uh, they're eating their pizza and ice cream. They're just, it's convenient. And as we've noted before, you know, it's just convenient to be in Babylon. So there they are, and they're, they're having trouble getting energized and saying, well, let's go back and rebuild Jerusalem, that big ruin. A lot of people aren't really that interested in that. They are living the good life, uh, so it feels to them, but they're not achieving God's purpose. And it looks like there's insurmountable obstacles. How are we going to ever get this rebuilding, restoring the temple, everything done? Well, what, what can we do about all this? Well, you know what? Periods of slowness in God's work they often wind up as being the most exciting the most exciting times when we're leading up to a revival. And so we want to be awake and alert because as things are, you know, down in the bottom of the depression, it seems like uh, that's often the time when God finally, God works. And to us, it seems like he's waiting. What's he waiting for? But he's usually waiting for us. So are we awake? Are we alert? Are we alert today to what the Holy Spirit might be wanting to do? as we are available to God to be his servants. And this, 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 which, which might be, don't you think? It might be the craziest hour in the history of planet Earth. And we get to live here in this time. God will help us. Mm -hmm.